Irvin Howe was a, when I first came, I never met the man. And, uh, and, and maybe that's for the better. Sometimes when you meet a writer you admire, or an artist you admire, or a politician you admire, you don't admire them as much. And uh, it's because the image that you have of that figure and the reality clash. Uh, Irving Howe did something that I, I learned uh, passionately uh, from him. And that is that uh, it is the duty of the writer to write clearly and to write for people to understand. And it might sound, Leslie, as something uh, childish to say, but uh, academia can often obfuscate thought, can, can make it obscure. Only the initiated are going to be able to understand the jargon. And that, that day frustrates me, it upsets me, and uh, it ultimately defeats, in my eyes, the very purpose of teaching and the very purpose of writing. I, I love finding new audiences, and I love doing so by forcing myself to, to find a language, a different language, uh, in order to communicate with them. I don't believe it's the same English language in which one writes an autobiography for adults, a, a children's book like Golemito, or a book like El Illuminado. It's the same language, but it's not the same way you use the language. You have to put yourself in the mind of a child to see what a child might understand, and or or a young adult or an adult. And I think that the the biggest sin a writer. Uh, might engage in is in writing for himself or for herself or for a small group of people and forgetting that the rest of the world is out there. There's too much writing th there is that is that goes to waste and there is no reason why the university should be a place secluded, excluded, distant from society as such. I think the university, the college, is in society, it's a laboratory, it's a, it's an ex a place to experiment, it's a pulpit, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, an open forum where what is happening in society is, is explored and then being brought back to society. Um, I feel that my mission is not only to communicate with a larger audience in the different languages that I have, sometimes adapting those languages and sometimes switching them there are things that I can only write in Spanish and not in English or only in Yiddish or only in Hebrew because the audiences are different. When you write a, a short story in Spanish, it has a different taste than when you write the same short story in English. The audience is different. The, the, the way that the words are organized on the page, the, the, what the audience will take is different. And I, I, my... My ultimate mission is that that writing will, will cause something. It's not about changing the world. It's about making people aware that, that uh, something changed inside them. I don't know exactly what that change is, but I do know that I don't want to create lighthearted, forgettable uh, entertainment. I want to provoke thought. That is, that is what I'm after. And uh, there is a very famous Austrian uh, philosopher, Ludwig Wittgenstein, who once said that the limit of one's world is the limit of one's language, and also the limit of one's language is the limit of one's world. And that which you cannot say doesn't exist. I, I, am, I am fascinated by that thought. And I am fascinated by the possibilities of saying things in different ways within the realm of this world. What can we do? How can we invent? Maybe that's part of what Wittgenstein is saying. It's the limit of our world. But the limit of our world is also the limit of our fantasy or of our imagination.